Aisha and Dante from Red to Love. <clears throat> I really don't do um, these reality show reviews, but I really wanted to talk about it because I saw the interview of Aisha and I always felt like she was a beautiful woman. She had a heart of gold. She came in that show with um, the real intentions of, of really loving somebody and being ready to love. However, this is reality TV and it's not real. And you're trying to be real in a fake uh, situation because these people are not really trying to find the one for them. They're trying to get the TV exposure or maybe they're trying to get a bunch of people um to follow them or maybe they are ready to love but they want a lot of suitors you just never know um i've always admired her beauty and her realness and i loved how she just did everything from the heart i love that about aisha and i hate that she got involved with the man and i truly honestly i truly felt like my suspicions about this man could have been wrong because every time that they were on camera and i understand that some Sometimes, you know, people can make themselves appear to be one way on camera and off camera is another one, but they really appear to be in love and they really appear to adore each other. And I said, well, wow. Well, maybe just for the sake of conversation, they, um, uh, what's his name? Steve Harvey, nephew, nephew, Tommy, nephew, Tommy finally got it right. Um, honestly, uh, I know the season that's on now, not really interested in it. It's kind of lame to me, but uh, anyway, back to Aisha and Dante, um, you know, for me, the I, I'm not in the dating game. I'm married. I thank God I'm not in the game no more because it's scary out here. However, I do feel like when I was, you know, kind of, out, you know, trying to really socialize and try to get into the, the dating game and find love and all the other stuff, I think that. <clears throat> I was a part of the last set of people that could go out there and just date and try to find out, you know, what's, what's how everything is going to stick, right? Now, we're put in a position, we're actually put in a position where you better pray, and all of us should have been doing this from the beginning, but you better pray and let God send you somebody because you trying to go out there and do it yourself. You be done attracted a killer or something like that and don't even know. We hear about these um um these dating things, dating uh uh these dating uh, outings going wrong all the time. We are put in a situation where we better trust God. We better rely on God. No more trying to do this stuff yourself. Anyway, I done got sidetracked. So when it comes back down to that, it's best to just trust God, listen to God, fall back, you know. And that way you won't be put in, in bad situations or have bad scenarios happen to you. And then now you're the next story time. So when it comes down to Dante, when that man said he had three kids with three baby mamas, the first thing that that, that flew in my mind was he's irresponsible he's an irresponsible man and he's irresponsible with his penis that he's a promiscuous person because listen he probably you know had sex 101 times before he actually had all them kids so don't get me wrong um he made it seem like those relationships were just made out of love it was just didn't work out i didn't believe that from the beginning I didn't. Uh, um, nine times out of ten, if you hear the 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 baby mama side, I hate to say it like that. That sounds so ghetto. But um, the baby mama side, you'll find out that no, this dude was on some dumb junk, and that's why they got rid of him. Which Aisha talked about that. But honest to goodness, it would have been a complete turn off. I'd have been like, no, because if I'm the next person to get pregnant by you, it's gonna be some junk, you know. And it's just a lot of. Uh, it's, I'm just gonna be. Um. Uh, amongst the Roska, uh, Ro I can't even talk no more. It's like four o'clock in the morning. Uh, among the uh, roster of women that you done screw, and now you just, you know, whatever. So, another red flag for me with him was, you know, he got into it with Zadia, you know, and you know, she was upset because she was not his pick. She could not stand it. Now, when Zadia got in his face, you can look in his eyes and tell he really wanted to slap her. Or he really wanted to throw her off that back of it. You could look at him and tell that's how he felt. But he kept playing it off like it was all about that dish. Because what was the name of that dish? Oh, man. I, can't, I know it began with a Z, but I can't call it right now. That, 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 um, that dish ain't that good. I mean, really. He was just throwing off big time. Um... 
And it was a fact that, like, after the fact, when he was talking to um, Aisha, he legit could not stand the fact that he let Zadia get away with that. That's how I knew that man was abusive. He could not accept the fact that that girl got in his face and he didn't do nothing about it because the cameras was rolling and he would have been shown in his true colors, pretty much. Um, And she had to keep, as far as... um uh. Aisha, she had to, uh, she had to like keep reiterating, no, you don't look bad. You don't look bad. You know, what you did was a stand up thing and she's going to look bad. And truth be told, she did look bad. She looked like a person that couldn't take rejection. But see, now it makes me wonder what was really said between, I, um, uh, Zadia and Dante in order for her to really be spazzing out like that. What was really, what was really said? Were there, like, promises made? Well, I mean, like, what was it? So, we'll never know because I think Zadia's probably not doing interviews anymore. And uh, I don't know if Dante's going to speak out or not because he looks like a totally rotten person at this point. So, honest to goodness, ladies, please, to, to all of my single beautiful women out there, stop ignoring the red flags. Just because someone is older and... um. <clears throat> you feel like okay well they've experienced things they've been around the world and back it doesn't mean that you have to accept their baggage there are plenty of men out there who don't have children stroll to and fro who don't have four and five baby mamas because from my understanding he possibly has a fifth or sixth child and he also had that um that child was conceived while he was in a relationship with Aisha the man's a cheater the man moves around and it's just sad that you see these black couples, you know, on TV and you think it's all going to be beautiful. And then they come out to be the stereotypical black male. And don't get me wrong. I'm not a male basher, but there's a pattern there. Okay. <clears throat> um, at the end of the day, I pray that uh, a real true man loves her um, because I did, you know, she did speak about you know, um, the abuse, how he would twist her arm and how the other women, the, I guess baby mamas came out and spoke out about how he was abusive. But like I said, at least to the public eye, you know, he could not accept the way he did Zadia. He, 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 it just, it just itched and scratched even after the fact. Now, a man that's not abusive would be like, girl, get out my face, gone. And he would just be happy she gone because she doing all that dumb junk. And he's like sitting up there talking about some meal. It really ain't all that ain't number rice and some other junk. So it really ain't, it ain't like that, you know. But uh, what I will tell you is, like I said, don't ignore the red flags, baby. If something don't sit right with you, don't don't try to sit up there and try to explore that and try to convince yourself that everything is all right. Get away from that person. You don't have to deal with that stuff. If you feel, you know, and like I say, you know, she fell head over here. I think the honest of goodness, I think she fell in love with being in love. Because she wanted someone to, to love her and care for her and really be in her life, especially after dealing with an abusive relationship. But it hurts my heart that this man actually basically took her down the same path all over again. And we just have to be careful, you know. Um, you know, like I say, you know, it's just just be careful. Pray, man. Y'all better y'all better hand this stuff over to God. Don't be trying to go to, to these reality. And I'm not saying that to be funny. Don't try to go to no reality TV stuff with my them old crazy dating sites because them dating sites ain't got nothing but a bunch of weirdos on there. Like I used to tell my homegirl, rest in peace. Get up off them doggone sites because them niggas ain't number weirdos. I said that the whole time. And then she would meet up with some of them and they'd be strange. One dude lived in some type of barn. One other guy, um, <laughs> now this is real sick. One guy kept telling her that, you know, she looked like his sister. You know, she found out she wasn't related to him or anything. So she started to entertain him. And he kept saying, you look like my sister. You look like my sister. You look like my sister. And then finally he sends over a picture or I think it was a picture. And I think he also sent her to the girl Facebook page. And true enough, they look like twins. Then on the flip side of the coin, the man was talking about screwing her. And I'm talking about doing it every which way but the right way. Now, why would you be comfortable screwing somebody who favors your sister? It makes me feel like you want your sister, but you can't have her because you know it's not right. So, 
Like I say, honey, y'all stay away from them dating sites. Stay away from them. Y'all, I'm telling you, if it's a God-ordained situation, God going to put y'all at the right place at the right time. And everything's going to work out. Cause that's what you know. Even with me, you know, I the guy crushed on in the seventh and eighth grade. I, if somebody would have told me years ago you're gonna marry that guy, I probably would have fell out, y'all. I would have flat out fell out. But for us, right place, right time. I didn't have to go on no dating sites to be with nobody. I've never had to do that. But I'm saying, don't get lonely and entertain these weirdos because a lot of them got weird. Uh, they got seek all kind of crazy secrets. I wish that my, my homegirl was still living so she could really just sit down and just tell y'all about the crazy things that she's dealt with off a of day now. Then that's one I may tell us another story time, but I'll let it be known it's not mine. But this one, a co-worker was telling me about a friend that saw that met a guy and she thought everything was fine until she got back to his apartment. So anyway, back to Dante and Naisha, ladies, let just let it be a lesson learned. Don't ignore the red flags. Don't try to see things in, in every which way. You know, use your discernment. If you don't have discernment, pray God to give it to you. He don't mind. He don't mind giving you handing out gifts because that's a that's a major gift to have. One of the best gifts to have is discernment. So, you know, and just don't ignore the red flags. You know, you start seeing a change in their behavior or they're acting like they're so in love and they can't stand being away from you. That's stalker behavior. That's stalker behavior. Because every person in love with you or not, at some point, they know you guys have to have space. They know they can't talk to you 24 hours a day. They know they can't send 101 texts or whatever or stop by all the time. There has to be a healthy space. Not somebody hemmed up on you to the point where you can barely go to the bathroom. That's weird. <clears throat> you know, um, I think he did a thing called love bombing with her. But listen, I'm the type of person, you know, if you don't see nothing right away, if you start noticing a change in behaviors, get away from that person. It's one thing to say, okay, well, they explore their emotions, but it's another thing when all of a sudden you guys are, oh, we're so in love, lovey-dovey, and then the next second they hate you, they don't want to be around you, they can't stand you. That person is pretending to be someone that they're not. And what it is, is they're getting sick and tired of playing that game with you. And so eventually, if they don't rush you into a, a marriage, they'll go ahead and turn on you. But see, Aisha dodged a bullet a major bullet so just let that situation be a lesson learned talk to you guys later goodbye